Hi guys, this is Fenchy. Want to make your video look good, but you don't know where to start? Don't worry, I got you. In this crash course, I'm going to break down the basics of color grading, but also I'm going to teach you how to make a beautiful grade without a lot of tools. All this for you to level up your footage with ease. No experience needed. Are you ready? Let's get cracking. Okay guys, it's been three times I'm recording this video each time I have a problem so I hope this one is good. Okay, so here we are in our timeline and um, as I said in the intro, we are just here to grade efficiently and also have good basics to after adapt our grades to other kind of footages. So um, the first principle that I think it's very important for you guys to know as a beginner is color management. Color management to be really fast is the fact that you're gonna interpret a log footage to another color space to uh, see it on a display. So most of the time we are interpreting our log footage to a Rec 709 space. So this is what we are going to do right now. We are going to do the easiest technique. If you want to know more ways of uh, doing your color management, just check my video about it on it. Uh, I'm gonna put it in the annotation for that. So for this, we are going to uh, go to our settings, so project settings here. And if you arrive to the master settings, you can go to color management over here. And in color science, we are going to change it to DaVinci Wire RGB color manage. So DaVinci Wire RGB color manage will automatically put our color processing mode to SDR. So this is basically saying to DaVinci, I want my log footage to be interpreted in Rec. 709 for broadcast purpose. So here it's pretty good and uh, I'm quite satisfied and I'm gonna hit save. So when I hit save, my footage is gonna be interpreted in Rec. 709, which will bring us a very good base to grade around this. So already you see that my footage looks really good and we're gonna enhance from it with our grading. So if, for example, when you hit save and you don't have any interpretation from DaVinci Resolve on your footage, so that means that your footage stayed in log, don't worry about it. You can go to your clip thumbnail and you can right click, go to input color space and just choose the camera you shot your footage on. After this, my second real big thing that you need to know before grading is just the role of the scopes. So if, for example, you have a UI where you don't see your scope, just go to this icon and when you click on this icon, you will find your scopes. If, for example, you don't have the waveform like I have, you can just go to the menu here and uh, choose the waveform here. So I want you to be focused on waveform just because it is very great as a guide for us to know about luminance points. So here on the waveform, you have a graph that goes from zero to 1023. The important thing that you need to know is that your luminance point needs to stay between this zero and 1023. Why? It's just because this is representing the safe areas for broadcast displays. If, for example, I'm going under my zero, what will happen is that I'm going to have cross shadows. That means that my shadows won't have any details in their black point. If I go up and I go over my 1023, then my highlights will be clipped and I'm going to lose details in my highlights because my display can't read over 1023. So for us, it is very important to stay between the zero and 1023. My third thing that I want to say before we are grading is that I want you guys, when you are starting to color grade, to do realistic grades, which means that I don't really want you to adventure yourself too much in stylized grade. Why? It's just because you need to train your eyes to recognize what are the good colors and what are the important colors in the frame. So what I mean by that is that a good colorist will 
obviously know how to stylize a frame but will always be on point for for example skin tones uh, grass sky etc etc just because they know the importance of memory colors so when you are beginning it is very good for you to first make a lot of grades that are realistic that are quite close to colors that you have in the rec 709 just because you need to make your eyes get used to the colors of things and play around when you have these strong basics that are literally part of you okay so for this grade what we are going to do is that we are going to grade around the rec 709 and getting inspired by the rec 709 to give it more punch more color separation and to have a real decent grade that you can uh, be proud of showing to people so now that we talked about everything that was important now we can just grade and we are going to build our note tree so for our note tree what i love to do this is my personal preference but i think this is very useful also for you beginners is that we start our note tree with a parallel node so why I start with a parallel node is for two reasons. The first reason is that my two nodes that you see over here are fed by the source. That means that from these two nodes, I will have more possibilities in terms of color grading because I am fed by the log. The second reason is that it really helps me to visualize on my node tree where I am. So why I say that, it's because I like to have on top all my primaries. So primaries are all the alteration that you do globally on the footage. And also I have a vision on my secondaries. So all my secondaries will be on the bottom. And secondaries are all the adjustments that you do on just part of the image. So let's say like I have a view on my macro adjustments and I have a view on my micro adjustment. So that's why I really like this. So to start a grade, we are going to start from macro to micro. Always do that because uh, it is very important to nail our grade first in the macro adjustments, okay? So uh, we are going to label this node balance and the balance will help us to just readjust our luminance points and our contrast so for this i will go to my primary color wheels and uh, i'm going to raise my gain over here to have more uh, luminosity in my image and uh, i'm going to raise a bit my lift because if you can see this is dangerously going towards the zero okay so i'm just going to raise my lift a tiny bit just to be safe okay and I'm gonna go down with my gamma just to have a nice contrast without going under our zero so I didn't tell you what was the function of each color wheels here that I played around with but for really quick lift is all the darkest point of my image so I will then by affecting the lift I will then stretch my luminance curve to uh, fit my shadows okay gamma is all the middle points of the luminance curve so you can uh, stretch down and stretch up and gain is all the brightest point of the luminance curve and you can stretch up and stretch down okay Inherently, when you are stretching leave gamma again, it will create a sort of contrast because you are stretching your curves. Now that this is done, what I want to do is that I want to bring a bit more punch to my footage. Uh, I could actually use my contrast, which then like would give more punch, but I don't really like to use contrast and I find that you can really go overboard when you are a beginner with contrast. So what I like to do is creating my contrast with the HDR wheels. So for this, 
I want to create a node before my balance. So I will uh, hit Shift S. And when I create a node before, I'm going to just label that HDR. We are going to go to the HDR wheels and uh, we are going to just select our shadows, light and highlights. Okay. What I want to do here is that I want to have a bit more punch to the image and more separation. So for this, I'm just going to take my light and go up with my light, not too much. Just to have a nice punchy roll off. So if you see, this is without light and this is with light. Okay. And uh, I'm going to go down with shadows just to have more uh, separation and uh, something like this. So if you see, it really helps our roll off. So now it's way punchier in terms of image. Okay. So uh, I will stay like this. Uh, why I like the HDR wheels when you are a beginner is just like because as everything is separated in terms of tonal range, then uh, you have more control over your contrast. And this is pretty difficult to go overboard with it. So that's why I recommend you as beginners to use the HDR width. After this, uh, we are going to create more separation in this scene already with the art department and uh, the wardrobe. There's a lot of separation here, but we want to create more separation out of the grade. So everything pops out in the frame. So for this, I'm just going to uh, go to my secondaries and call this node hues. And for hues, we are going to use the color wrapper. Why I like to use the color wrapper? It's because you can affect the hues and the saturation at the same time. So I like to use uh, my uh, hue resolution to 16 just because we have more vectors of colors. And so then that means that we are more precise in terms of uh, colors that we are moving around. So also, I really like when I do this to change to the vector scope. So uh, I go to my scope, I change to the vector scope. And here you have a diagram where uh, you see where your colors are sitting in a diagram. And if you can see, it is very similar to the color wrapper. So which is like a bit more intuitive for me to know where my colors are. So also you can see that in this scope, there is a skin tone line. So the skin tone line, you can find it in the settings and you can enable it in the settings. But the skin tone line will guide us to know where our skin tones are sitting and if it is okay, you know, like to uh, have them in this spectrum. Okay, uh, this is like very subjective because we could do a full episode on skin tone uh, because skin tones are very subjective. But uh, this is good just to have this as a reference. You don't have to match it 100%. But uh, if, for example, you don't really know if your skin are sitting in the good realm, then you can help yourself uh, with this line. So for this, uh, what I see is that you can see that my skin tone, which is the orange color, are a bit towards the reds. And uh, what I can see also is that my reds are a bit towards magenta. So what I want to do to create separation is that I want to just move my colors around to make them more believable. For example, right, if there is too much magenta in my red, I think this is better for me to add a tiny bit of yellow in my reds just to make them more believable in the eyes of the audience. Same for skin tone. If there's a bit too much magenta, this is good to bring them a bit more towards yellow just to make them more believable in the environment, okay? So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to go towards my skin tone and you can see when I'm over my skin tone, I'm having an indicator on my color wrapper to know where actually my skin tone is sitting. For this, I'm just going to take my orange vector and I'm going to go towards yellow where you see that now 
my orange is a bit more towards the line and uh, I think I'm just gonna raise a tiny bit the saturation so when I pull um, the vector there is more saturation when I go down and I go towards the center there is less saturation so what I'm gonna do is just have something believable I'm checking at the same time and uh, I think I'm okay now I want to remove the magenta of my reds so I'm gonna go to my red vector I'm gonna take the red vector and go towards yellow and so if you see look at the vector scope at the same time when I move around my vector of red is moving at the same time and I can then judge where my red should sit and I think this is pretty good here. So if you want to see what it does, this was before and this is after. Before and after. So we have less magenta in the skin and we have less magenta in the reds, which is pretty nice because it cleans up the red quite well, okay? So now what I also want to do is create a bit more separation in my frame. Uh, we started to create separation just by moving around the hues, but now we can create separation with density. So then I'm just going to call this one density and I'm going to change my scope to waveform because we are affecting the luminance of each color. So it is good to just go to waveform to know where we are in terms of uh, safe areas okay so for this we are going to our color slice and in our color slice you have multiple vectors of color and uh, what i want to do is just to add a bit more density on certain colors so for example i would like to add a bit more density on this robe it's i i find it really nice and really lovely so uh, what I can do is that I can go to my red and here in my red you have this for density and this for subtractive saturation. So I'm going to take my density and I'm going to raise my density. And if you see I'm already like going towards the zero. I still have, so I'm just going to go and not go overboard. And so 0 0.02 is pretty good already <laughs> okay so um, this is pretty nice because it affects my robe and there is more um, density to it which makes it more 3d what I want to do is maybe raising a subtractive saturation on their skin so then they are popping out a tiny bit more if I go this is a bit overboard so I would just like at 109 and uh, also I'm going to remove the density of the skin because skin density will make you a bit darker in terms of skin tone okay if I remove density I will make them whiter okay so then I just remove a tiny bit of density and so we have something that is more poppy and I really like it and I'm just gonna leave it as it is okay now that I've done my overall look I'm gonna finish it with some um, nice vignette so vignette is the nice final touch that you can do uh, so this is my first final touch after I'm gonna show you a second final touch that it's actually my signature and that I don't think you're gonna see in other colorists, no trees. So um, first we are going to do the vignette. And so for the vignette, I will go to my window menu and I'm gonna take the power window here and I'm gonna shape my power window to have a nice shape and I'm gonna soften a lot. Now that I have this, I come back to my curves and you can see everything is selected in within my uh, window and uh, I'm just going to create a point in my curve and I'm going to go up with my curve so then like that will make my characters a tiny bit more vibrant in terms of luminosity I just check that everything stays safe and everything is safe 
so that's pretty good for me okay so now I'm just gonna right click and go to add node add outside node add outside node is making the contrary of the previous node okay so um, here then I have everything around the vignette that I've done that is selected so for this what I can do is just create a point and go down and so we are darkening the side of the vignette to have something a bit more focus on the girls and so if you see this is without vignette and this is with vignette so it really help our focus to the girls and we are going to tie up the grid with a final node that is my signature which is the overlay node so the overlay node is helping you very easily to create a very nice contrast and density at the same time and that will tie up everything in your look so uh, for this ultra simple you are going to right click on your node and you are going to composite mode and you're going to choose overlay so overlay will have a very crazy look at first because you are saying to DaVinci Resolve that you want the graded image on top of the other graded image okay so that's why everything is super cranked but don't worry we are going to fix this so we are going to our key menu and we are going to key output in gain you can decrease the gain because we are decreasing the opacity of the node and we are going to decrease to 15 percent so 15 percent is pretty good for this environment because it really adds a nice density a nice color separation and a nice contrast so i'm going to show you so this is before the overlay node and this is with the overlay node so before the overlay node and with the overlay node and it really brings a bigger dimension to your grade even though we are pretty close to the rec 709 and here you go guys so guys we went a long way you see we were quite close uh, of the rec 709 in terms of our grading but if you can see we really enhance the image where we put the focus on the girls making some colors denser than others we uh, created separation in the frame and also like we uh, made our frame look way more professional than the Rec 709. So this is all for me. I hope it helps. Uh, if you find any value in what I say, <laughs> follow me for more content on color grading. I am really happy that we are already 7,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so much. And I see you for the next video. See you guys.